So, James, in essence of time, I'm just going to get started with the logistical stuff. So, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for coming today and uh, sharing your Friday evenings with the Born Rich Foundation, uh, James Lucas, um, just everybody, the whole collaborative. It's a collaborative effort that we're able to put these things together to support the communities, uh, not only in Connecticut, but uh, <clears throat> virtually all over the nation. I see we have people in here from Arizona. Uh, we have people from Texas. We have people from Connecticut. We have people from Boston. So there's going to be some people coming in from New York and all areas of the globe. So it's very a, truly a testament to you all that you would uh, share your time with us. Just a couple couple things that I have to go through as far as sponsorships. Um, I want to thank uh, the Ballheads um, nonprofit in Meriden, Connecticut, for being the Born Rich fiscal sponsor. Justin Mitchell. I want to thank uh, the brand Asnithia, based out of based out of Texas. My executive room, CEO Jimmy O, based out of Texas, and obviously James Lucas Nutrition are also based out of Texas. So we just want to thank everybody. Also want to thank Meriden Children First, Equity CT, for engaging in the community conversations chats that we've been able to do. And also uh, that to this uh, intro to health, wellness, and uh, fitness with the registered dietitian, James Lucas III. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for coming today. We have a bunch of people that it, it really does take a village to execute these processes. So we want to thank everybody for the support. A little bit about James Lucas, and uh, I can't do him as much justice as, I'm, as what I'm about to say because he's a very talented individual. I had the opportunity to grow up with him in Hamden, Connecticut. Uh, he played football with uh, Antosh Hawthorne. You'll see him on the screen, Antosh Hawthorne. They both played for Hamden High Football. Antosh Hawthorne is a uh, former collegiate athlete at the University of uh, Wisconsin, NFL level, uh, the Oakland Raiders, NFL Europe with the Frankfurt Galaxy, and just recently retired from the Arizona Rattlers. So he's living comfortably out there in Arizona. So that's why we all have this, uh, we all have this connection. Obviously, I want to thank Jimmy O, uh, president of the board of trustees of the Born Rich Foundation and the CEO and visionary founder of my executive room for all his hard work and dedication for building these platforms and, and just... And just giving the innovative advice. Uh, so with that being said, uh, James Lucas, so what more can I say? Over 10 years of experience as a registered dietitian, uh, certified specialist in sports diet, dietetics, dietics, uh, exercise physiologist. Uh, he is the owner of James Lucas Nutrition, which offers a comprehensive and realistic uh, meal plans, nutrition advice, which helps optimize your health, wellness, wellness and ac athletic performance like i said earlier he's a graduate of uconn uh with a bachelor's degree in nutritional nutrition sciences and a minor in nutrition for sport and exercise uh, also james worked uh several several years at the yale cancer hospital as an oncology dietitian uh working with cancer patients um and working with cancer cancer pa patients athletics and focuses on individual nutritional needs uh for for anybody so what he does is specified nutritional i'll let him tell you so anyway we'll leave that alone <laughs> he could he currently resides in dallas the fort worth area of Ta uh, dallas texas and if you want to look him up you want to go to jameslucasnutrition.com he has many youtube channels with uh meal plans and workout home workouts and instructional videos and uh so james i'll be engaging everybody through the chat i want to encourage everybody to use the chat and i will add your links and uh, leave your questions in the chat. And James, I'm looking forward to your presentation on nutrition, fitness, and wellness. So uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rich. And thank you all for joining this Friday evening, May 1st, one of my favorite months of the year. Uh, feel free to please um, ask any questions in the chat as we're going forward. I can see the chat as we're presenting, and I'll try to address those questions. If not during the presentation, we'll discuss it um, at the very end. So um, to start off today, we'll be talking about nutrition for health, wellness, and fitness. And uh, during this time of COVID-19, I know that it can be challenging because we're stuck in a house. Uh, we might be dealing with what's known as COVID-15, which is similar to the freshman 15 that you might see when you're going to school, you're eating all kinds of snacks and all kind of stuff. You're not as physically active, you know, you're using your social Seeing. So it's affecting your ability to get to the gym and so forth. So I'm hoping that I can give you some tips to help fight, you know, that anxiety around the weight gain and help to keep you um, balanced as far as knowing what foods to choose and what might be best to help support mental health as well. 
So we'll go over nutrition for health and wellness. We'll talk about exercise for health and wellness. We'll go over some specific foods that can affect mental health. And then I'll give you a few resources that you can check out and follow up. So first, when it comes to nutrition, it's kind of a simple concept when we think about it. I mean, everyone is kind of a nutritionist in their own mind because we have to eat every day, three times a day. We've been eating all of our lives. So we're familiar with proteins, fats, carbohydrates. But a lot of times we eat a lot of these foods in vain, not really understanding, you know, how it could have an influence, how much of it we, we need. Well, I would like to give you some principles to help with the management of these food sources. So we have protein as one of our macronutrients. So macronutrients are the food sources that give us the majority of our energy needs each day. So we have protein, we have carbohydrates that we're looking to manage, and we have fats. We also have fruits, we have vegetables, we have water that we should be consuming on a daily basis. And these foods all provide us with vitamins and minerals, which are the foundation to help with the digestion and utilization and the production of energy from protein, carbs, fats. Now, when we look at the spectrum of the food sources that we have at our disposal, we have to think about other factors that can have an influence on our energy needs. So we have our daily physical activity, which can have an influence on how much calories, protein, uh, fat we need. And then we have um, other nutrients that we might consume from supplements, which is at the very top. We recognize from this pyramid that the foundation of it all should really be around sleep. As sleep could throw off everything, as we'll discuss as we go through the slides. So when we're looking at protein, if you can maybe throw in the chat, what are some protein foods that you, that you like or that you're familiar with? Um, you know, throw a couple of comments in the chat box as far as protein foods that you that you choose on a day to day basis. I know that some people might follow, say, a vegetarian vegan diet. Others might follow, you know, whatever diet that they prefer. Now, we see chicken, beans, uh, eggs, turkey. You know, those are some common protein foods that you might choose on a day to day basis. Protein is the foundation of the diet. And we should be choosing at least two servings of these protein foods at every meal. It helps to keep you more full, helps to build muscle tissue, also plays a role in a lot of metabolic processes, uh, helps to support immunity, for example. So during breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you want to make sure that you're getting two servings of any one of these food sources that are listed. Uh, this will help keep you full throughout the day, which can help with controlling your appetite, and that may help with supporting your choices as you go from breakfast, lunch, to dinner. Uh, for folks that are looking for weight loss, there's no question that when you consume more protein in relation to carbohydrates and fat, you'll see more results when you're eating more protein in the perspective of carbohydrates and fat. So double up on the protein sources during your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now moving ahead, we have carbohydrates, which I think gets a very negative connotation in the media, um, it's very abundant. We see it everywhere. We go out to eat to a restaurant. They usually will give us a minimum of two to three servings of carbohydrates. We'll start the meal off. We like to break bread. We have uh, bread and butter to start out with. Uh, we, one of my favorite uh, to start out with is red lobster, uh, those cheddar biscuits. You got to be careful with those. You know what I mean? But we got carbs that come on an entree as far as your appetizer. And then once the main course comes, you may have, you know, mashed potatoes, corn. There's going to be two servings of carbohydrates uh, present. we got a whole bunch of snacks in the house. Um, you know, pull open your, your snack cupboard and you'll see all kinds of candy, uh, Rice Krispies, cereal, English muffins, uh, white bread. There's an overabundance of carbohydrates. And if there's anything that I can make a suggestion on is take control of this piece here and cut it down by half. And I guarantee you, if you're looking for weight loss or more weight management, this could be an area that will have a major impact on, um, you know, calorie intake and daily balance. So these are your carbohydrate foods. But where we sometimes get it confused is carbohydrates are also found in fruits and vegetables. And this is where we don't want to skim. If anything, 
I would replace one of those sources of carbohydrates above, like your, you know, oatmeal or I'm sorry, some of the white rice, white bread, the refined carbohydrate sources with your fruits and vegetables. There's no question that the more fruits and vegetables you consume, it subsequently reduces your risk for disease. So the more you consume of the fruits and vegetables, the greater impact is going to have on reducing your risk for disease. And a lot of times, unfortunately, with nutrition, folks don't really pay attention to it until something happens. You know, with nutrition, it's more of a cumulative effect. And then all of a sudden, you know, diabetes may uh, arise or what have you. Uh, we we want to take that prophylactic or preventative approach. And there's no doubt that the more fruits and vegetables you choose, it will impact your health for the positive. So, um, you know, try to choose two servings of the fruit today, um, five servings of vegetables. So if there's anyone here that likes any of these, let me know what your favorite fruit or vegetable is. I know it sounds kind of whack, but it is very powerful for health. Now, um, when we're looking at fat sources, a lot of times we get this one kind of confused as well. We think if we eat more fat, it's going to make us fat, but that's not necessarily true. It's really all about calorie balance and fats really provide you with more energy than any other nutrient source because when you're looking at the nutrition facts, you'll see that every nutrient source like protein, carbs, fat, it shows you a percentage of calories. The fat gives you nine calories per gram, right? So we're looking at 20 grams of fat a serving. Um, it's going to be 20 times nine, right? Nine calories per gram of fat versus four calories in protein, four calories in carbohydrates. So fats are very energy dense, but they're also important. Certain fats give you what's known as essential fatty acids, which mean they can't be dispensed in the diet. They have very important functions like reducing inflammation. And the ones that I've bolded in black, all of those foods bolded in black are the ones that you want to choose more often. They're the ones that are affiliated with better health. So when cooking, for example, instead of using vegetable oil, it's not really, that's a marketing scheme. They're just saying it's vegetable oil to make you think vegetables, you know, this is good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy vegetable oil at all. It has more pro-inflammatory fats in it. You want to use like canola oil, olive oil, flaxseed oil, things of that nature. Coconut oil is, is all right. It's kind of fancy, you know, it's kind of trendy right now because it's keto. Um, I have coconut oil in my cupboard as well, uh, but, you know, it's higher in saturated fat. It doesn't have those omega-3s. And, and don't worry. Feel free to make comments. I'm not here to criticize your, your diet. I think coconut oil is cool. It can fit in. But use some uh, olive oil and so forth as well. Uh, avocado oil can be helpful. And then try to avoid the bacon, uh, coconut, butter, cream, etc. I use them, but it's all about moderation. All right, cool. So we're going to jump into the plate method. This is one of the most powerful, simplistic tools that you can add to your daily diet that I'm 100% sure if you use this at least once a day, especially during dinner, you will have better health and better weight management over the long term. So you want to cover half your plate with non-starchy vegetables. That's your, cauli uh, I'm sorry, your cauliflower, your broccoli, your spinach, your um, um, onions, your peppers, the lower calorie, high uh, volume foods that have a lot of fiber, right? It's going to keep you full. Then you want to have a quarter of your plate, lean protein, baked, grilled, avoid fried, and then another 25% carbohydrate. Guaranteed. Follow this one here. Anything you take away from this one, start adding this one in your diet, guarantee you it can have a big impact on health for the long term. Now, when we're looking at the distribution of food in the digestive system, this is a picture of the stomach, right? We talked about oil is very calorie dense. So if you're pouring, say, two tablespoons of a particular oil or three tablespoons, you're looking at, say, three, four hundred calories that would be added, but it's not really dense. So your stomach is like, yo, I really didn't eat much. I still feel hungry. So you might add more oil, might eat more food. So now you have more calories than needed. Then we have in the middle an example of meats or proteins. If we're just eating a diet full of protein or meat by itself, that still might leave us a little empty. So you're going to eat more food, eat more carbs to fill the gap. But to the far right, we see when you fill your diet with more non-starchy vegetables, fruits, that's going to fill your stomach up. You know, when you're eating 
spinach and salad and all that, it's kind of whack, like, because it takes so long to eat and, um, you know, it's, it's very nutrient dense, but it doesn't give you a lot of calories, right? Um, so you want to eat those non-starchy foods to fill you up. And um, I remember once I ate a whole bag of broccoli and um, I felt super full. I was like, yo, this is crazy. But the calorie content was very minimal. So try to fill up on those non-starchy vegetables first before you choose the meats or the oils. All right. So moving forward, when we're looking at principles around water, in regards to protein, there was a question. Take your body weight, multiply it. Let me see. I'm sorry. For your protein content, you want to consume your weight in protein. So if you're 180 pounds, I will aim for 180 grams of protein per day. It sounds like a lot. But again, choosing those lean protein sources keeps you full, helps support muscle, and also can support muscle building over time. All right, we got about 12 minutes. I'm going to keep it moving through. Water, aim for eight cups a day. You want to look at your urine color to make sure you're well hydrated. Too much of anything is not good for you. You, want, you don't want to drink a whole bunch of water because then you wash, a, wash away or your electrolytes. I'm sure Antaz is familiar with this as an athlete. When you're sweating a bunch, you don't want to just drink a whole bunch of water. I remember back in the day when we were playing football, I was consuming a whole bunch of water one time and we was, we was killing it on the football field and it was hot outside. It was right around hell week or whatever we used to call it when we did three sessions a day. And by the end of the last session, I cramped up. When we got on the line to run 100 sprints, 100 yard sprints, I was like, I'm gonna kill these guys, but I cramped up, you know what I'm saying? You gotta have electrolytes in your, in your water as well. That's your sodium, your potassium. So, um, you know, you wanna maybe add some cucumbers, you know, some frozen berries and so forth in your, in your fluids. And um, watch out for the juice. That could be an empty calorie, you know, cut it in half, mix some water with it. That'll give you some electrolytes and other nutrients. Intake. I know right now, um, being that it's COVID-19, we're in the crib chilling. We might get a little bit bored and might want to consume a little bit more than usual, but there's calories in alcohol as well. It actually is the second highest nutrient source. It's not really nutrient rich, but it does provide seven calories per gram of alcohol versus nine grams in fat. Um, the studies show that alcohol intake has gone up by like 240 something percent during COVID-19. Uh, look out for Vitamins, minerals, that's also something that you can consider adding in your diet, especially if you feel like you're not eating well. Uh, be careful not to buy something very expensive. It doesn't need to be complex. A uh, general multivitamin can work well. For women, they should take one that has iron and calcium fortified. If there's anything that I can tell you to take as a supplement is vitamin D. I tell my homeboys all the time, look, take vitamin D. It's no joke. Um, over 90% of Americans are vitamin D deficient. And it can have a very important role on um, supporting your immunity and reducing the risk for sickness. Take at least a thousand units per day. Um, I had my vitamin D levels checked recently. They were they were in a uh, sufficient level because I supplement vitamin D every day. Um, consider a probiotic for gut health. Vitamin C. You don't need to take vitamin C only if you're feeling symptoms of illness. That's when you want to supplement between two hundred to two thousand uh, milligrams a day. Vitamin E. Right now, there's some guidelines that came out from COVID-19. Elderly only need a supplement with vitamin E, around 134 to 800 milligrams a day, elderly being over 65. Uh, zinc is another one. A lot of people like to take zinc. I know my mom, she, she always like, oh, I, you know, take my zinc when I'm feeling cold, coming on, you know, my lozenges. Um, again, same thing as vitamin C. You only need to take if you're starting to feel a little tickle in your throat. And you don't want to take very high doses for more than two weeks because it can have other complications like messing with your nervous system. All right, we'll move forward. All right, cool. Now, sleep. Sleep is mad important. You want to make sure you're getting around eight hours a minimum uh, per night, at least six hours. It could mess up your, your metabolism over the long term, affect your appetite. Um, there's a, a hormone called ghrelin. I call it ghrelin the gremlin. When your stomach starts growling, you ever notice that when you don't sleep a lot? It's because the hormone that regulates your appetite, when you don't sleep a lot enough, it goes up. So your body's like, yo, I'm hungry, but you don't really need the calories. So um, when that happens, first fill up with vegetables and then choose lean proteins. Avoid the chips, you know, and the empty calorie foods. 
But notice, if you're not sleeping well, it can affect several different um, factors in your body, like cardiovascular health. It can impair muscle growth. Um, it can make diabetes worse by messing with insulin signaling. It increases inflammation. There's a whole bunch of factors. So I know we're all grinding and we're staying up late at times, but don't be afraid to take a little nap here and there and try to make up for sleep you know, on the weekends if you can. What about too much sleep with nutrition? Someone asked about that. We'll try to get to those questions in a moment. So um, I'll give you some tips in relation to sleeping and what could help, but let's run into exercise real quick. So we have some exercises that we would like to include on a daily basis. Right now, we don't have the gym. So for resistance training with weights, we can't really, you know, pump iron. So we want to use body weight exercises and try to use resistance bands. I highly recommend going to YouTube. There's a whole bunch of videos out there that you can do from home to help you stay in shape. Um, resistance training is so important to maintain muscle tone, right? Then we have our cardiovascular exercises like walking, jogging. Um, that's where you're increasing your heart rate. And that's very beneficial for cardiovascular health and supporting weight loss um, over time. Any, any exercise can support weight loss, but cardio is usually popular from, from that regard. And then we have high intensity interval training. This is for once you get a little bit more um, in tune with your physical um, training. Once you get your resistance training down, your cardio after about a month, add that high intensity interval training in, which is basically where you're giving all out effort for at least 10 seconds. This type of training has been affiliated with burning more fat than any other um, workout routine. So things like sprints, on, on the bike, if you're riding real quick, that, that works. Swimming real hard, uh, boxing real quick, any of that. That actually specifically was interesting. It breaks fat down in the stomach area, which is important. So try to add that in once a week. It's pretty tough, but it could be um, helpful. All right, so yoga as well. Um, yoga, I don't do yoga. I, I wish I did it more often, honestly. It's very good for lower back pain, and I've had a little lower back pain. Uh, personally, from an injury back in the day, but it's very good to help with um, stretching, and it's also great for mental clarity. So, if you're into yoga, you know, include that within your daily exercise routine. So, what are the benefits of exercise? Why are people recommending that we do it? All of these principles really come down to the mental component. Um, it's a little bit of a challenge to get going, but I can tell you that there's a myriad of, of benefits. As we can see, it improves body composition which means you know, it helps your physique, makes you look better. It helps improve blood lipid profile, which means reducing risk for cardiovascular disease, helps to improve those good cholesterol levels, improves your immune system, increases strength. It also helps with um, improving physical function and mobility for elderly, helps reduce risk for falls. And if you have diabetes, this is one of the most powerful medical interventions that you can implement. The reason why is because once you start exercising, you actually open up the cells so that the sugars that are circulating in your bloodstream, they actually get into the muscle tissue. So by exercising, you're improving blood sugars. Those sugars, instead of being in your bloodstream, they're getting in your, in your muscles. That's what you want to happen. Um, additionally, when you're exercising, you remove the fat from your muscle, which is why the body's not able to get those sugars. They're, being, they're very elevated because the sugars can't get into the muscle. But when you start exercising and losing fat, the fat around the muscle, it clears. So now the muscle can see the sugars and the sugars get into the muscle cell. So I encourage you, you can actually reduce your risk for type 2 diabetes and eliminate it by just increasing your activity. I'm real passionate about that, if you can tell. But, um, when we're looking at exercise, health, and wellness, right? Avoid a sedentary lifestyle. Avoid sitting for prolonged periods, playing video games for a long time. Um, you know, I know we're indoors a lot right now, but if you can get out a little bit, that'd be great. Avoid watching a lot of TV. It doesn't have to be neat. I know a lot of times we're like, man, we don't have a, a true exercise regimen. And there's actually something called neat activity, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. For example, me and my friend, we took the boat out yesterday. I didn't go to the gym, but we were cleaning the boat like crazy. And I knew that that was a neat activity, which can really burn a lot of calories and get you. And you can do stuff like washing the dishes, like, you know what I mean? 
putting a little extra effort into it, sweeping around the house, mopping, walking up to the stairs. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do that doesn't have to be exercise that can get you shredded up and help you to lose weight. So, um, you know, find balance in your exercise routines as well. If you're someone that works out a lot, be cautious, get some good rest, get some good nutrition, because there's studies showing as you increase that exercise output, you can actually suppress your immunity. Um, again, look at motivational YouTube videos. I love uh, David Goggins. He's pretty crazy. But sometimes you need that type of motivation, somebody to say some crazy stuff that you wouldn't tell yourself to get you off the couch and get you going. Grab some stuff around the house, you know, chairs, jugs, um, you know, do push-ups, jumping jacks to help you. Now we're going to transition over into mental health and what foods have been affiliated with supporting mental wellness. So we all succumb to, you know, those delicious foods that are so abundant in um, our life and around us, either in our kitchen. Uh, if we can keep it out of sight, we can keep it out of mind. So put it somewhere in your house where you can't see it where it's not you know, readily uh, available. Uh, second, a healthy diet can support your fitness and health goals. Stay active, that supports your mood. Additionally, certain nutrients have actually been affiliated with enhancing your mood. Those are plant-based foods, high fiber foods that are nutrient dense, fish like salmon. And then there's studies showing that fast foods and sweets, they can actually increase the risk for depression and increase inflammation. So try to choose those sparingly like I, I eat fast food as well I, i'll go to wendy's every once in a while i'll get the salad off the menu hey sometimes i might get a crispy chicken sandwich <laughs> it's all about balance you know what i mean you don't have to go crazy about it but if you're eating it say once a week twice a week three times then you might want to try to find an alternative if possible or try to choose something healthy on that menu and then try to focus on magnesium zinc vitamin d fish and tryptophan we know tryptophan is that turkey uh, Thanksgiving hormone that makes you feel sleepy. So look for fruits, veggies, green teas, great soy products. I was talking to my man Rich about soy a few weeks ago. There's often a fear that soy foods for men can have an influence on testosterone and cause more estrogen, but that's totally false. It actually helps to support heart disease, reducing it, and um, can be a good protein source. So like edamame beans could be something to choose. Look for those beans, the whole grains, nuts, fish, salmon. I love salmon. I eat salmon like three times a week. And then if you like shell shellfish, that could be a good one. Uh, be careful with the nighttime boogeyman. <laughs> 12 o'clock at night, you know, you're staying up late working and you're feeling hungry. You get that little hunger bug and you'd be like, yo, I'm hungry. You, you, don't, you don't think about anything like, yo, I just want to eat whatever. But you got to use your mental clarity because I this happens to me. At late at night, I'm Working, I'm like, yo, I need a snack. What do I have? And you often feel like something sweet. So try to avoid the fast foods. Um, have good snacks around. I actually have a meal guide that gives you a whole bunch of healthy snacks that you can choose. Um, go for the protein bars, yogurt, uh, nuts, uh, dried um, meat, what's that stuff called? Uh, jerky. You could choose that. Uh, apple with peanut butter, things of that nature. Cheese stick. And then when you're looking at affordable items, right? I understand that at this moment, it could be kind of challenging to eat healthy because some of them might cost a little bit more. Well, which ones might be more affordable? Try to go for the potatoes, you know, one large potato is about 55 cents each. <laughs> Next, beans, you know, 11 cents per quarter cup. Carrots, 15 cents per carrot. Frozen berries are awesome. Highly recommend that. It's 67 cents per cup. Frozen wild caught salmon is about $1.75 per quarter pound. Ground beef is um, about a dollar. 75 and canned oysters. I'm not a big fan of that one. I might do canned sardines or something, but not canned oysters. But it's a dollar per two ounces. And then pasteurized eggs are a great, it's about 50 cents per egg. So try to include those as more affordable, tangible items. So to summarize, we're right at six o'clock. I think we have a few minutes for some questions. Balance your food intake and your macronutrients. Use the plate method. Fill up on those non starchy vegetables and protein. <coughs> Limit alcohol. Avoid the junk food, stay physically fit, and get enough sleep. And uh, there was a few questions in the chat. Okay. James, I had a question. Can I, 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 oh, I saw somebody put something about fibromyalgia yes. and sleeping habits. Me. Can you touch base on that a little bit? Any of your expertise on that area? Certainly. Yes, um, fibromyalgia, um, I don't have a whole bunch of 
information that I could think of off top head. I think it has something to do with ovarian conditions or there's maybe some pro-inflammatory states. But as far as sleeping and how that can help, um, try using chamomile tea before bed. Avoid caffeine before bedtime, like six hours beforehand. And also um, melatonin. I love melatonin. It's a great supplement that's very safe that you can take. Um, one milligram to up to five milligrams. Also make sure your room is very dark and cool. I sleep with my room super, super cold. So that helps, you know, keep your body temperature regulated and uh, make sure it's dark, super dark. Turn your phone off. Those lights can affect your, your sleeping. Uh, try chamomile and lavender. Those can be helpful as well in relation to uh, sleeping. James, I have Thank one more question. It in, es in essence of time, we do have um, we have to close up in a little bit, but just some one of the things that we uh, we went over in our community conversations that we do have a webinar happening right should be happening now after this one on another link is uh, what are just some foods that will make us that are healthy that will boost our you know there's a lot of anxiety a lot of stuff going around what are some feel good foods that are not the comfort foods the foods that are gonna boost our energy, boost our morale, but not that ice cream and the, and the pizza and things like that? Certainly. In that regard, I would um, make sure that you choose some good fruits like apples, berries, um, you know, mangoes, and try to choose fresh. But at times, if you have to choose canned, just rinse beforehand. Those are going to be nutrient rich. They're going to be good sources of carbohydrate. They'll have some vitamin C for the immunity from a feel-good perspective, to keep you full throughout the day. Um, as mentioned, some of the protein foods like beans can be very helpful. Um, you know, salmon if you have an opportunity. Lobster, which is interesting. Um, back on a few of those slides, I know that's more expensive and more elaborate, but that was affiliated with supporting mood. But um, we can try to get some of this information sent out to you. But that I mentioned are the ones that might have some affiliation with um, supporting mood. And uh, maybe enjoying a, a meal with your family if you can, you know, folks that are close to you in home, um, having a family meal, sit down time and, you know, turn the TV off. That might also help to boost mm. your morale. Awesome. Awesome. So in essence of time, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for coming. We will be back next week. Same time, same place. Um, we will be f uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, follow James at James Lucas at J Lucas Nutrition on Instagram. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, all of the above. Um, he does have great, phenomenal YouTube videos with exercises. He has a book out um, called Hip Hop Nutrition Volume 1. If you go on his website, jlucasnutrition.com, you can have access to meal plans and different different things. But we will be back next Friday. Uh, we have a, multi a multiple variety of different platforms that we're engaging in uh, throughout the week. So jump on when you can. We do realize that, you know, everybody's in different places with the kids at being at home. But we just born rich and we're a collaborative. We just want to provide different platforms for everybody to feel free to jump in, even if it's just to get away from the kids for 20 minutes or just or just take a step away from the monotony of, of this COVID-19, but we will be back. James Lucas, I want to thank you once again. I want to thank everybody. I see Will Shuley in there. Welcome, Will. He's another former football player. <laughs> Hamlet, no, no, played, no. played with James. <laughs> um, so um, in essence of time, um, I do want to thank everybody for coming. I will send out flyers and please fill out the survey that is in the chat room and I will send the survey to everybody. Tell us what, what we could do better, some things we can improve on and you really like about tonight so i'm gonna leave it at that and i'm gonna hop on to another zoom feel free to uh, follow me for uh community co uh, uh cultivating conversations with equity ct um and uh and it'll be in your emails and uh that's all i got to say for now james you want to leave off with anything uh that's pretty much it i um, look forward to answering any questions feel free to shoot me an email if there's anything that comes up and i'll do my best to address it thank you born rich foundation and we look forward to future programs well, thank you, thank everybody. You. I, and please join. I'll send everybody the information about next week. And James Lucas will be back next week. Thanks, thank everybody. You guys. Thank you, everybody. Have All a good right, night. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good All night. right, y'all.